On our journey today, we are going to check out the east side of the Dakota apartment building. So, slide on your backpack and grab your passport and come along with me as we travel back in time. This video is sponsored by Audible Adventures. It is an awesome website filled with audio tours that I wrote and produced with assorted narrators, showcasing the historic homes, gardens, and workspaces of the world's most creative luminaries. Check it out. I really hope you'll enjoy it. Welcome along, fellow time travelers. This is Scott Cardinal. Thanks for joining me on another photo analysis video. Today we are traveling back in time to New York City in 1903. That's when this photo of the legendary Dakota apartment building was taken. Because of its association with John Lennon, most people do not take the time to appreciate how incredibly beautiful the Dakota apartment building truly is. So, let's start our photo analysis. This photo was taken from Terrace Drive, just east of 8th Avenue, now known as Central Park West, within Central Park. Many of the streets in Manhattan are narrow and one way, but West 72nd Street was made to be wider because it was designed to have traffic going two different ways. Of course, that's really awesome now, since we have automobiles going both ways, but back in 1903, as you can see from that blurred image, there were still horse-drawn carriages transporting people throughout Manhattan. That carriage is likely preparing to drop someone off or pick them up in front of the Dakota's entryway. And of course, that entryway was featured in the South Side photo analysis video, so if you haven't checked it out yet, go ahead and do so. So let's focus on the east side, shall we? Starting from the bottom left, for those who have been to the Dakota, you will notice something is quite different in this photo than as it would appear today. That, of course, would be the entryway to the subway. As you can see, the cast iron railing atop of a stone wall is there, and it wraps around from the south side of the building and runs along the entire length of the east side. And on the other side is a dry moat that acts as a light well in order to allow sunlight to enter through the basement windows. A closer look will reveal that the railing is the same design that repeats just like on the south side of the Dakota. And it's that of Neptune, or Poseidon if you prefer, and his sea serpents. And I'll show a closer view of that in another photo analysis video. When the Dakota was first designed, it was expected that the apartments on the ground floor would be the largest and probably the most desired because they would be much easier of a transition for residents who would be moving into them after having lived in townhomes and mansions elsewhere in Manhattan. At the time that this photo was taken, the window on the far left was for the large dining room of the private restaurant that was there for Dakota residents and their guests only. You could not walk in off the street and go into that restaurant. No chance, no way. It was for Dakota residents and their guests only. Now, the window next to it was for the private dining room of that restaurant. Now, as you can see, those windows have stone balconies. Looking towards the right, when you reach about mid-block, you can see a protruding stone balcony kind of like a oval shape, and above it are two profiles carved into the stone. Now let's look up to the second floor. You can see the windows are round-headed, just like they are on the south side of the Dakota. And above them is a terracotta frieze with designs embellished with Wild West details, such as arrowheads and ears of corn and sheaves of wheat. And also you can see that there are two windows to the south side and there are two windows on the north side and they have stone balconies. And in the center is a stone balcony with balustrades in the center. Now we'll go ahead and skip the third floor and look up towards the fourth. And as you can see at the south end of the east facade on the fourth floor, there are two stone balconies with a decorative railing between them. And it's also like that on the north side of the facade. Between the two windows is a niche that seems like it should contain a statue, but it never has. And looking up from the street, one can see a kind of wicked and creepy carved grotesque looking down upon all those walking by. And in the center of the east side is a bay window. 
and the sides are embellished with carvings of shells. Now, one level up on the fifth floor, the bay window was embellished on the sides with carvings of grotesque faces. The sixth floor is the floor where Edward C. Clarke chose to build his enormous apartment, which supposedly had 17 fireplaces. Four of the windows have Juliet balconies with iron railings, and in the center, above the bay window, is a stone balcony that can be accessed through a door on the other side. Okay, now we arrive at the seventh floor, and I know that this is the part that you've been waiting for because that's where musician John Lennon lived. The window on the far left is that of the white room, with the sofa and the piano that you've seen in a whole bunch of photos, usually with Yoko Ono. And the next window is for the library, and there's a really nice photo of Yoko standing in there as well. Then there are three additional windows, and those are for chambers that have had various uses over time, for example, a study or different bedrooms, and one of which was likely Sean Lennon's childhood bedroom. And so that is the entire length of apartment number 72. Now, skipping over the apartment next to it, if you look on the far end of the east side, you can see a window for an apartment that, at one time, was owned by the country of Portugal in order to provide a permanent living and meeting space for their United Nations ambassadors. Now check this out. Portugal bought the apartment in 1971 for $250,000, and they sold it for $11.5 million in 2013. So that's a pretty good investment. Along the seventh floor is a decorative railing that runs along the entire floor with the exception of breaks for stone dormers that are embedded into the lower portion of the mansard roof. The eighth floor is the lower level of the attic. There are two copper dormers and a stone dormer in the middle. And there are additional copper dormer windows in the mansard roof. And there are windows in the gables. Once again, kindly remember that apartment number 72, John Lennon's apartment, is not a duplex apartment. It is not multiple levels. The eighth floor is the attic. Now, that does not mean that John and Yoko did not buy any attic space, and that does not mean they did not buy the attic space above apartment number 72. I'm just telling you that that is not part of their apartment. However, there are several photos of Yoko in an attic apartment, the most popular of which is a photo of Yoko taking a photo for the cover of the Season of Glass album, which shows a glass of water, half empty or half full, whichever you prefer, and a pair of John Lennon's glasses that unfortunately are smeared with his blood since they are the glasses that he was wearing on December 8th, 1980, when he was murdered. Moving on up to the ninth floor, on the south and north ends are gables that are capped with elaborate stone finials. The mansard roof has copper dormer windows to allow light to enter into the attic. The peaks of the gables on the north and south sides each have one window. Looking up toward the top of the building, let's talk about that pyramid-shaped structure. It's actually accessed through a door on the roof. Once upon a time, this was storage space, and then some Dakota staff had briefly lived there, and then designer Ward Bennett acquired the space and turned it into an amazing contemporary apartment. In fact, there were some photos of John Lennon that were taken on the roof and inside of Ward Bennett's apartment. And you can probably find those online. If not, I'll probably post a photo analysis video of that at some point. The Dakota's flagpole goes directly down into the center of the pyramid structure. In fact, Ward Bennett built a loft in the top of the pyramid, and he had the flagpole go down into the center of his desk. It's pretty cool. Now, looking up at the roof, you can see that it is covered with ornate slate, and some of the brick chimneys can be seen from the east side. There is a fence along the roof, and there is a well-known photo of John Lennon leaning against it with Central Park in the background. They cannot be seen from here, but the roof contained water tanks that supplied 2 million gallons of water per day, running through 200 miles of piping. And here's something that's kind of cool. The highest pinnacle of the Dakota is 185 feet, and the highest point is the top of the pyramid. 
And so, this concludes this photo analysis of the east side of the Dakota apartment building. I hope that this gives you a good understanding of how interesting and beautiful the Dakota apartment building is, and that there was a lot more to it than what happened to John Lennon there. If you have any thoughts about this subject matter, please put them in the comments below and share what's on your mind. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. You could also go on Amazon or any other bookseller and order some of the books that I wrote about the Dakota. Please also download the Audible Adventures app on your iPhone or Android, and if you can, please sign up for an annual subscription. Doing so would really help me out with a lot of my research. I do look forward to you joining me again for another photo analysis video. Until next time, I wish you safe travels on all your journeys.